I'm rocking uh, Ipswich Town Football Club tonight. <gasps> Jesus, mate, that's pretty good. I think we're going to have to. It better be worth it because I turned off Cobra Kai for this. So, uh, let's hope. <laughs> uh, this is. You cannot beat the cringe factor of the original. It's just, you just can't do it. No. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kent Talks. So we're trying a different format today where we actually have some of our Patreons um, in chat who will be asking us questions here and there. Uh, today's topic is kendo grading, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the history of kendo grading uh, and also possibly a little bit about uh, my skeptic article from uh, nearly, nearly two years ago at this point. Uh, criticizing many aspects of of kendo grading which which got some interesting responses at the time but i'm here today with alex I bennett don't know what and you're talking about you Lynn. <laughs> i'm here with alex bennett and michael ishimatsu prime hello so uh alex do you want to start us off with with maybe a little primer on on kendo uh, the, the kendo dan system or or, or its origins Okay. Um, well, the Dan system that we have in place today uh, was established in 1957, actually, uh, and revised in 2000. Uh, the but first Dan's were created earlier than that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the system that we have today, as in the way it is at the moment. But the original well, Dan system was first introduced into the martial arts or the modern martial arts by Kano Jigoro um, who was the founder of judo and he created Kodokan judo in 1882 and from memory I think it was 1883 that he introduced the Dan system to provide uh, rewards and also motivation for his students in the Kodokan. Um, he borrowed the Dan system uh, from an already established system for ranking uh, in not the martial arts, but in uh, other uh, uh, very traditional arts in Japan, Shogi and Go. Okay, which uh, actually had been utilizing a Dan system. So he thought, well, that's very rational. And until that point, uh, there were ranking systems in, in the various martial arts, uh, depending on the school, they were slightly different. I think the first school that actually had a kind of a, a tiered approach was the Jikishin Kageryu. Um, and they would have things, uh, well, you know, ranks that we know now or traditionally associate with Kobudo, with, uh, you know, the Menkyo Kaiden, blah, blah, blah. But these were very sort of broad categories, the Menkyo Kaiden and the Shodan and the Chudan and uh, whatever uh, um, words were utilized in the, in the classical schools. But there were usually no more than uh, three sort of categories within these these schools. With the introduction of the dance system that made a lot more levels that could be employed um, to give uh, students of the martial arts a more, um, well, an, an incremental approach uh, to um, keep them interested and keep them motivated uh, to train. Um, so judo was the first. At the same time, this was in, in 1883 or the 1880s, at the same time, uh, Kenjutsu, or what we call Kendo now, of course, was becoming established in the police in the Keishicho. And they also introduced a grading system that was very different to what Kano Jigoro had. They introduced the Q system. Okay, so there were two sort of uh, in the modern, or what we now call uh, uh, Gendai Budo, or the modern martial arts, the ones that were established and created and developed and evolved in the post Meiji, well, Meiji period and beyond. Um, there was the Dan system in Kodokan Judo and the Qs and the police, but 
is uh, when the Daini uh, Pombudokkai, which was an organization created in 1895 to oversee the promotion of martial arts culture in Japan, was established. They looked to try and amalgamate the grades, make something that is common for all of the modern budo. And from memory, I might I have to check this, but I think it was 1917. It was about 1917 where they created the Daini Pombudokkai created dance for all of the martial arts, including kendo. Um, the police, in terms of kendo, still kept their particular rank system going, but kendo in general, in the popular sense, had now had the dan system. So it was essentially an idea that was taken from Kano Jigoro, who borrowed it off Shogi and Go. Um, in those early days, the dan system in kendo was only up to fifth dan. And then after fifth dan, you'd have the, what we call Shogo now, um, Nenshi, Kyoshi, Hanshi, although they were called different names back then. Then, uh, after the war, Budo was for, uh, prohibited for a while because it was considered to be a dangerous activity, uh, a tool for uh, ultra-nationalists and militarists. So Kendo and the community, as were the other martial arts, were pretty much prohibited for a number of years. The All Japan Kendo Federation was created in 1952. And uh, this was sort of like the reinstatement of Kendo and they introduced once more the, the, the Dan system, um, but they kept it to fifth Dan. And then with Renshi, Kyoshi, Hanshi, that was from 1953, I think they introduced that. I should add, and I know it's a bit confusing because this whole history is confusing, but in a few years before the war, uh, the Budokukai introduced uh, a system up to 10th Dan. Um, and immediately five people were made ninth dan, five people, or was it ten people were made hachidan, and twenty people were made seventh dan. But after the war, this disappeared. When the All Japan Kendo Federation was created, they reinstated the dan system up to fifth dan, with the Renshi Kyoshi Hanshi after that. Uh, but around about 1957, I think, um, especially in the police, there was a lot of uh, talk about making the kendo dan system up to 10th dan, like judo was, because judo had always been like that through Kano Jigoro, and you get people who specialize in judo in the police and people who specialize in kendo in the police, and the judo and guy- one guy's got a, an eighth dan, the other guy is like, I'm maxed out at five, at He's level five. five. Yeah, it's like, hey, that's not cool. Uh. <laughs> so it was basically because of this that, uh, again, I have to check the dates, but I'm pretty sure it was 1957, they introduced a uh, system up to 10th dan, and they still retained the uh, Renshi, Kyoshi, Hanshi, Shogo, but they also had the dan ranks uh, up to 10. And in 2000, so 20 years ago, this was the system was kind of revised again. Uh, ninth dan and tenth dan haven't been officially abolished; they've just been removed from the grading criteria of the All Japan Kendo Federation. So, in theory, ninth dan and tenth dan could be reinstated at some time, but in, in, in practical terms, ratings go up to eighth dan in kendo now. And in practical uh, terms, they haven't actually promoted anyone to those ranks. In no, and it's it's not in the purview of the of the um, uh, the regulations for gradings at the moment. It's sort of like being sort of uh, put in suspended animation, I guess you could say. Uh, but this is not the case with the International Kendo Federation, and there are countries around the world. Um, well, there's only a few of them, but uh, the first one that comes to mind is Korea, and they have their own. Uh, they grade their own people uh, up to eighth dan, and in theory, they could even create a ninth dan or a tenth dan because the international rules ha actually haven't changed. So that's where we are at the moment. That's uh, sort of a, an overview of the very convoluted history of the dan system in kendo. And it gets even more complicated when that when you talk when you talk about uh, the way it's it's the rules and the and and uh, they have have changed as well even even within our lifetime like we tend to think of a lot of these these systems of having been created 
generations ago, right, and, and set in stone, and, and people don't realize just how many modifications have been made. Mm, yeah, um, well, to be honest, since 1957, okay, uh, the post-war period, which is, you know, another new era for kendo, of course, um, the, the system hasn't changed a hell of a lot. Um, the, the main changes were in, as I said, in 2000, where they sort of just tweaked it a little bit. But generally speaking, the criteria for the various darn grades in existence haven't really changed at all. Uh, okay. Yeah. Michael, anything? <laughs> You want to add? <laughs> I think Alex said it all. I, I would have said pretty much the same thing, to be honest. If uh, that's, but you, said, <laughs> you mentioned before then that the, the system was tweaked in uh, 2000. Is that the same time when the waiting periods between grades was introduced as well, or was that? No, they've, they've that? sort of always been there. Waiting period. Um, they they have changed a little bit over time. Um, they've got a little bit longer. Mm. Well, a little bit, right? Uh, I think it, w it used to be minimum one year, right? What for? Um, I'm looking at the comments here. I think this is something that, uh, that you said, but it used to be up to even 30 years ago, just uh, or, or a lot shorter wait between between ranks. Yeah, well, when you say a lot shorter, it's not that much shorter. I mean, I, when I started Kendo in 1987, um, I had to get my EQ first before sitting Shodan, of course. Uh, and then I had to wait three months before I was allowed to sit Shodan. I think that's still the same. Or six months, is it, man? Three months or six yeah, months between six. EQ and Shodan? So we're, we're, we're talking for the lower grades. We're talking about the difference between one year or two years or something mm. like that. But nothing major. Um, but as it stands at the moment, um, uh, to sit Nidan, you have to uh, wait one year or more after Shodan. Uh, to sit Sundan, it's got to be two years or more after Nidan. Yondan, three or more years. Godan, four or more years after after fourth dan. Rokudan is five years after passing Godan. Uh, Nanadan is six years after Rokudan. And Hachidan is 10 years after uh, passing Nanadan. Um, but these the years between each of the grades uh there's there's been a little bit they've been made a little bit longer but nothing substantial you know we're just talking about one or two years for each one max and there was i i think it's probably over 10 years ago now that i think if you were over 65 um you only had to wait half the time for your next grading but that's been done away with now that's an interesting one um it has been done away with in Japan, but internationally, it's still possible to do that. Yeah. Um, so, I, was it 65? I believe it was 65. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There, was, there was some guys that I went that my when I started that um, he came back to Kendo after many years, and um, yeah, we both passed Sandan at the same time, and then he then only had to wait. Uh, what was it? One and a half years in order to go for Yondan, whereas I would have had to have waited the full three yeah, years. Yeah. But that, yeah. right around, it was kind of around that time that, that changed, I believe. That's when uh, Hiro Imafuji's father overtook him <laughs> as well, the same sort of thing. <laughs> but they, they stopped that in Japan mainly because uh, the quality was um, just not up to it. And they decided, well, they did it as a kind of experiment perhaps to give older practitioners um, some more tangible goals to keep them motivated to train and and also um, although I don't really want to say this it's also a very important uh, source of income for the federation as well so to encourage people to go to gradings more often obviously uh, gives the federation more money to play with and to promote kendo but it sort of in the end it sort of didn't work out because uh, as I said the, the, it was just the examiners were saying, well, this is just not good enough, especially uh, the way the gradings are organized in Japan. 
um, which is you know a little bit different from other countries around the world. But the way it is in Japan, up to fifth dan is administered by the prefectural federation that you belong to, and sixth dan and above is a national examination uh, administered by the All Japan Kendo Federation, as opposed to Kanagawa or Kyoto or whatever. Um, so people who went on that system that you talked about, Michael, and sort of got uh, fast tracked up the dams, passed their fifth dan, and two years later or three years later or whatever it is, they're going to to the big uh, national Rokudan examination and looking like absolute amateurs and beginners um, because they hadn't been training very long in total. And so it was because of that that they said, well, this is just... This is not what the dan is supposed to be about, so that's why they pretty much got away, uh, did away with that system in Japan. I kind of thought about that a lot, and, and even the, the the waiting periods between the two, uh, between the, the different grades, is that's kind of that, that's a, a big move, really, from the federation to do that. To, you know, to 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 not have people just grading every year or, or one year after passing a grading, which would obviously bring in a ton of income, but it's. Um, kept like that in order, yeah, in order to keep the quality higher yeah. which I think is, is kind of you know they could go the McDojo route I suppose and say oh yeah just grade when you want whatever you want but they haven't done that which I think has been very beneficial really so that when people do pass the grades that they are really at that level yeah Let's yeah. let's circle back to that in, in in a second though. We have a we have a question, um, a more historical question. Did anyone pass a ninth dan exam, or were all of them uh, essentially just appointed by the federation? Um, ninth dan, and I, I can't tell you offhand how many people have passed it. They don't uh, award it anymore. Uh, but personally, um, I have known and trained with four ninth dance um, and I remember very well uh, when uh, Tsurumaru sensei who is, is my old sensei and also uh, Hiro Imafuji's sensei and Hamish's as well when he was um, he was the top of the you know pile and the Hachi dance he'd been around the block many times he was very famous um, and very well respected and i was in japan at the time when he was trying his hardest uh, to be promoted to ninth dan and the way uh he they were promoted um and i don't know the you know the the real ins and outs of it was was, it was very much uh, somebody who has been acknowledged by his peers as being I acclaim sort of a step ab above the, ab above the rest and the way that he did it this was really it wasn't an exam as such like we would do an exam now for shodan up to uh, up to hachidan where you have a panel of people sitting there and and assessing you um it was very much based on your career uh to date um your standing within the kendo community but what was interesting was really the, the the really important time for ninth dan, uh, at least for Tsurumaru Sensei, was the the Kyoto Taikai, which they hold in May every year in Kyoto. Um, it's for high-ranking people to go and do demonstration matches. Um, it's usually it, well, it's always divided into rank and closest person to your age who has had the same rank for a, a, an equal amount of time, if at all possible. And when you get to the really higher up, you know, Hanshi Hachidan people, there's not a hell of a lot of people left. And Tsurumaru Sensei was, he ended up fighting his senpai, his senior from his uh, college days. And he went to the uh, the Budo Senmon Gakko, that's the Budo Vocational School, which was kind of the elite martial arts school in the um, pre-war and war years. And he had to fight his senpai, which basically turned out to be um, Tsurumaru Sensei being his sensei's bitch, <laughs> or his senpai's bitch, I should say. Sorry, sorry to put it in such crude terms, but it just turned into Kagari Geko. So you see this Hanshi Hachidan, God, um, 
being manhandled by his senpai in front of everybody. And this is kind of like his unofficial test, as it were. And so uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of an honorary appointment. Um, it's a little bit different to Hachidan, which is definitely not an honorary appointment. You have to pass the exam for that. So ninth dan and tenth dan um, were uh, uh, sort of really you had to have a lot of standing in the kendo community before your peers would even consider. So that's why there's been so few. There's only ever been ten. Ah, sorry, five tenth dan's ever. And they're all long gone. I think there's about one or two, maybe even only one ninth dan left alive now. Um, after they changed the system in 2000, where they said we're not going to be giving out ninth dance or tenth dance anymore, I know of one sensei uh, who returned his ninth dan. Um, and that was uh, that was the Meiji and also the Kesh Cho. I think he also went to uh, the Kodansha Dojo, Michael. Um, was it Mori, Morishima? Sensei? Morishima Sensei. Morishima Tateo Sensei, who died just the other day, I believe. Oh. Yeah. So he he actually gave his ninth arm back, but the others kept it, but I, I think most of them are gone. I know of one who's still alive, and he lives in Kyoto. There's, there's one that I trained with um, several years back, Kurosawa Sensei from um, uh, Kanagawa. But he he was, so this would have been in 2006, seven something like that. And he was really old then. Yeah. Um, but he still would turn up, I think after he stopped um, participating, he would still turn up to local tournaments, you know, to be the, the, the top guy there. But I haven't seen him around for, for a long time. But I'd, I'd actually heard, I don't know, maybe if you can confirm this is true or not, that the reason why there aren't any tent stands, or why why there was only the five made it to tent stand, is Ogawa Chutaro Sensei was offered, or that they were telling him he was going to be promoted from ninth to tent stand. But he said, apparently, he said, well, my, my kendo is not on the same level as Mochida Sensei, so no thank you. And then after that, Everyone else is like, well, if, if he's saying that, then I, I can't accept getting 10th down either. So that's when, when when it stopped getting promoted to 10th down. That's a, that's a true story. It is, it is true. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it's just right. Um, it's uh, there's certainly a lot of a lot of weird pride uh, things mixed up with it, right? When you when you talk about the fact that tenth dan was only introduced because uh, partly of a of a you know I want something to, to be a boast about thing, and then and then we hear we have sort of the reverse uh, the reverse happening and sort of blocking everyone else from getting ninth uh, or anyone else from getting tenth dan and potentially even ninth dan as well, right? Because uh, well, they have that same sort of. They're not blocking. What do you mean by blocking? Well, as as Michael is saying, like uh, it, it, if if someone as as notable as he were to say, "I'm not good enough," um, it, it it seems it, now if anyone were to try to take that mantle of tenth on, it would be extremely difficult from a uh, from a. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't wouldn't happen, really. Um, <laughs> thing is, he, he wasn't doing it to block people. I think he was just genuinely a humble guy. And uh, today, he's still a legend. So, I mean, nobody in their right mind is going to say, well, you know, I deserve 10th done, <laughs> even, even if it was on offer. Um, I don't think that Ogawa Sensei realized that by him doing that, he's going to screw it up for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that does lead me to another question. Uh, and this was a, the, the subject of another skeptic article of then, do we really think that no one can be that good ever again? Well, I think now, particularly now, when you see the, the, the eight stand gradings, the pass rates are so, so much lower now though, than what they were you know, 20 years ago. It's less than 1% a lot of the time now, or maybe well, even half a percent, so... 0.3 to 0 
So, I mean, it's the, what is it in that famous National Documentary, uh, uh, National Geographic article, threading the, the, the narrowest eye of the narrowest needle in order to, in order to get eight done. So, I, I don't know if, I'm assuming people could still be that good, but the fact of the matter is, it's just Hachidan has been made much harder, I assume, to get, and then from then, Hanshi as well. Yeah, so more more emphasis has been put on uh, the value of Hachidan, and even more emphasis has been put on the value of Hanshi. So it's kind of, that, that was what the tweak of the system was. Um, in the old days, when you got Hachidan, you basically got given Hanshi, few years later as as a kind of like a, almost a set package um, but now uh, Hanshi dare I say it is kind of like in a way the de facto ninth dan um, so once you've passed Hachidan if you get to that level after eight years I believe it is um, you will be eligible to be uh, nominated uh, for the title of Hanshi. And this, that is very much based on, again, your standing within the Kendo community, your contribution to the development of Kendo and teaching and so on and so forth. And now the, the number of people who are awarded Hanshi every year, it's announced after the Kyoto Taikai, um, very, very few. Um, so it's kind of like um, it's not exactly the same because Dan and Shogo are different, but it's it's kind of like I said, it's kind of replaced ninth Dan. So it's 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 more that the the standard the bar has been raised for eighth Dan and especially for 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 Hanshi, rather than there are potentially people alive today who are Hachida Hanshi who had they been practicing kendo thirty or forty years ago might have been made ninth oh, Dan. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I guess it makes it by putting it all down, particularly for, for Hachidan, much more, I suppose, democratic in that way, in that it, it is a test. There's no more like kind of people's opinions on, on whether you think you're you're good enough to be it or not. It is a, every everyone has the potential to take the test, but it's just now so very few, uh, so very few pass it. Well, you've got to have for Hachidan at least, you you got to be bloody good and have X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, the kendo is, is the, the, the times between ranks in kendo are, for the most part, mirrored in other uh, Gendai Buddha organizations? No, I, I think um, that the, the criteria for uh, Dan, even though they use the same Dan ranks, is very different depending on the Budo. Um, and even within the Budo itself, like uh, like Karate has even more variations, if you like. Um, Kendo is perhaps, and I'm not saying this to imply that Kendo is better than anything else, I'm, uh, but Kendo perhaps puts a lot more uh, care and emphasis in the higher ranks than perhaps other budo. Other budo like judo, for example, um, promotion up the ranks is very much based on how many points you get through winning competitions. And this is actually the same as uh, shogi. And I'm not sure about go anymore, but shogi's been on the news a lot in Japan recently because there's a young high school kid who's a bit of a, a genius and he recently won two very important national titles and he is 17 or 18 and he's Hachidan okay um, and Kendo that you know a, a really shit hot high school Kendo kid might finish his high school with a sundown if he's lucky. <laughs> um, and that's because uh, in Shogi also, I think you become a professional from the rank of Yondan and your progression up the ranks, Godan, Rokudan, Nanadan, Hachidan, Kyudan, I believe it's up to ninth dan, um, is calculated on how many tournaments or how many matches you win and the accumulation of points which will take you to the next 
to the next grade. Judo has a kind of a similar policy, um, although I'm not particularly au fait with, with the ins and outs of it. Um, and then as you get up to the, the even higher ranks, like ninth dan, eighth dan or ninth dan, that sort of becomes, it's not even a competition based thing. It's very much a, a nomination uh, based on what you have done for judo, et cetera, et cetera. And you get awarded the grade. So it's not even an examination per se, although uh, I realize that there are occasions where that, that's different. So in other words, it's, it's less about perhaps technical skill uh, and and ability and more, a little bit more recognition of administrative accomplishments or contributions or seniority uh, to a degree or, or, or politics. Politics <laughs> or an Olympic gold medal from, you know, 30 years ago, all that sort of thing, for sure. Um, so one thing that Kendo does not have that other Budo does, uh, I know that Naginata does, for example, they don't have any honorary ranks or honorary titles. You have to pass them, um, come what may. Um, Naginata, speaking of Naginata, Naginata still has the old Dan system. It only goes up to Godan. So Godan is the highest uh, grade. Dan is technical. And that's the same in Kendo as well. Dan is very much a technical, uh, uh, what, what do you call, um, uh, assessment of your ability. Whereas Shogo, um, that is uh, your teaching philosophy uh, and again, your contribution, etc. And, you know, perhaps to a large extent in Naginata politics. <laughs> oh, I get in trouble saying that. Um, so even though you have the same uh, and one thing about Naginata that's very different to Kendo, even though we have the same dans, for example, uh, in, in a Naginata examination, to be perfectly frank, the examiners don't give a damn about what happens when you put your ball go on. All they're worried about is how good your shkake oji is and how good your cutter is and how loud your voice is when you have to do the shido and stuff like that. Whereas kendo, it's kind of like uh, almost the, the way around. <laughs> almost the opposite. Um, where your borgu, your basically your your touchy eye, your shi eye, is absolutely pretty much the be all and end all. Um, if you get through that, then you'll have kata, and you have to know how to do the kata to a fashion. Um, I've seen some, sh when I passed my nanadan over here, the people that were in the room doing the cutter with me, um, in New Zealand, they probably wouldn't have passed the nidan examination on the basis of their cutter. It was that bad, and I'm not exaggerating. It was shocking. Uh, they're getting a little bit more strict on that. There's also a written examination. Uh, as a point of comparison, Kendo, as long as you get your name right, okay, you're pretty much, <laughs> you're gonna pass. The written exam but naginata they'll give you a, a a handbook where you've got to pretty much memorize and regurgitate verbatim and in uh, fact that's what a lot of people do they, they literally just memorize the yeah. the handbook answer write it down and, and get passed and the, it's, it's interesting you know that right because i've also talked to some examiners who who say that the well, they, in Japan, that's what people do. They, they, they take the handbook, they memorize it, and usually the handbook's like a, a one paragraph or two paragraph answer, so it's not, it's not that long. Yep. Whereas they, they give the same test overseas, and people write essays. Yeah. <laughs> like front, back, they, they, they need a third sheet of paper. Yeah, well, they write about their thoughts on the question, which is what you should do, actually. <laughs> Um, as opposed to rote memorization. And that's because the Shinsaiin, I think, are really not of a very good level. And I will go on record saying that. Um, because it, it, proof in point is like in the handbook that they used for Naginata, there was a lot of typos uh, in Japanese. And um, 
so the, the poor when I was sitting my god and it's like people were memorizing I said but this is wrong should we put this in what if, if I change it then maybe maybe they're gonna fail me so like, <laughs> that, that's it's like that, that's that's not education that's just stupid uh, but kendo is pretty much uh, from six down and above they don't have a written portion of the examination anymore um, that would be your shogo grades, wouldn't it? That would be the really written examination for Kyoshi, yep. uh, Renshi and Kyoshi. Yeah, that's right. And Jukendo has a, has also a, a very different sort of standard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Uh, it's funny you should say that. I'm sitting my Nokudan in a couple of weeks for Jukendo, actually. <laughs> Which you've been practicing for, for how uh, how long? Uh, many years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, been, I've been doing Jukendo for what, how many years now? Uh, probably about 10 years. Um, so, uh, Which would get you as far as what, third Don, fourth Don in, in Kendo? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be about right. Yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, fourth done, maybe. Um, but, so they're a little bit, it's, it's, it's really interesting, you know, I, I, again, I shouldn't really be saying this, but I was talking to Tsuda Sensei, who's my sensei, and he's got ninth done. He was awarded ninth done last no one, No one who's watching this on YouTube, tell anyone else. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, we were talking about Hachidan and Kendo and Hachidan and Ju Kendo and he goes, oh, I hear Kendo's really difficult. And I said, yeah, oh God, yeah, it's like, you know, crazy. It's like 0.34% or whatever. And he goes, oh, wow, yeah. Um, we couldn't do that in Ju Kendo because everybody would quit. <laughs> so <laughs> so I mean, it's not, not easy to pass dance and, and do kendo. I mean, it's not just you rock up and they give you a piece of paper. It's nothing like that. But comparatively speaking, uh, the criteria is a lot more stringent um, in kendo, at least in my experience, um, than uh, than in do kendo. And also, it's more stringent in naginata and certain things, but not in others. So each sort of budo, even though they use the same dan grades. Um, they all really have different meanings. It just really is, it depends on the context of that budo, I think. So to put lump everything in one sort of bowl as meaning the same is, uh, it's not possible and it shouldn't be done. But you get, you know, I know people have been doing karate for 20 years and they've got their hachidan, hanshi and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you know, that's good. Um, but you would have to have been doing that for about 50 years in kendo and and even then you probably wouldn't get it type thing so it's it's, it's more so the sort of the converse it's it's in the in the weapons arts like uh kendo or, or naginata it's relatively easy to get to to shodan yeah, yeah. um whereas in in something like karate it, it, yeah. it's it's a pretty tough road to get there oh yeah just watch Cobra Kai, man. <laughs> For everyone joining, we were talking a little bit about how much everyone here is uh, is enjoying watching Cobra, which was on YouTube and is now on, on, on Netflix. Uh, okay. Uh, I do want to shift uh, course a little bit and, and talk about uh, my column, um, which is a little bit about the, the rules about how many years it takes to test between grades. Uh, so this is a bit of a, of a, a summarized version, right? And, and my argument here is that the rules about how many years you need to wait between sitting an exam uh, is not useful. And it's, in fact, actively harmful to the quality of, of Kendo. Um, I think it, it sends a message that uh, no matter how hard you work or how talented you are, that's not as important as when you passed your last test. It implies that the grading judges cannot impartially judge the quality of people by their performance in the test because they need to have known you you, 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 you had a certain number of years under your belt, right? They don't actually, they're not actually judging you solely based off of what you're doing out there. Um, it also strongly disadvantages uh, practitioners in more remote locations, especially outside Japan, who are not able, especially for higher ranks, to regularly travel to a place where they can they can take a, a grading test. Um, it provides a reverse incentive to stop training. Uh, there's a lot of people who pass an exam and then don't go to the dojo for 
months or perhaps years because they know that it's quite a while before they'll need to uh, they'll, they'll need to, to, to pass again uh, and it completely rules out the the, the concept that a younger person, a person below a, a certain age, could have a high skill level and and understanding of, of the art, right? No matter how many hours or how naturally talented or how hard you've 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 worked, you cannot possibly reach uh, that that uh, that high level. Well, um, you make well thought out points, uh, Yulin, and I know why you made these points. It's unfortunate a lot of people misinterpret your uh, your intentions, um, but uh, you're missing the point on a lot of them, um, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where to start. There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, start me with the first one, right? No matter how hard you work or how talented you are, it's not as yeah. important as when you pass your last test. I don't understand what you mean by that. Do you, mm-hmm. Michael? No, I, I mean, in front. If, if you're in front of a, a in, in a grading, and then uh, I, I don't think that's the time between your last pass is important at all. It's it's what you do on the day. It's. Uh, but it is because you're not even allowed to stand up there until you've done a certain number of, of years in yeah. in grade. Yeah, but look, put it this way: um, the criteria for each grade. Okay, uh, uh, sort of set out, right? And what they're looking for for a shot arm, what they're looking for for a knee arm, what they're looking for, you know, all the way up. Um, uh, incremental sort of uh, progress. Um, that if you are actually doing kendo regularly, actively, and you are assessing somebody else's kendo, you are able to judge that. And it's like, so for example, um, for... For the lower grades, uh, Shodan, Nidan, Sundan, which, you know, have one year between them or one or two years. Um, Basically, what what the Shinsain are looking at or looking for is is the level of the candidates' kihon. You know, how how correctly are they able to do kihon or the basic techniques? Um, And whether they have you know, acquired the basic skills, whether they know how to dress themselves properly, um, whether they also uh, are able to, uh, especially at Sundan, um, understand the rather convoluted concept of uh, ki ken tai ichi to score a yuko datotsu, okay? Um, So it's not just a matter of touching the target with your shinai. You've got to have, you know, the, the proper striking process and, the, and, the, and the, the, stroke, uh, the proper striking components. So that's all they're really looking for in Shodan, Nidan and Sundan. Obviously Sundan will be a higher level, it'll be more competitive. And so kids at high school who are very skilled, uh, who usually train like demons for hours on end, um, they are athletically uh, gifted in terms of they have, they have power. They have strength, they have stamina, they have agility. Um, They're like Duracell bunnies, right? They just keep going and going and going. Um, And they, their main focus is also to, uh, you know, from the the outset, um, shiai or competition is a very important part of their training and a very important part of their motivation. And so, what Shin Sain are looking at here is also competitive uh, ability as well as how they can sort of execute all of the fundamentals. Then when you get up to the, the what they call the, the middle Dan levels, which is Yondan or Godan, which is more, is looking for not so much of a an active style of Kendo, but a more mature approach and that you're not just going hell for leather trying to strike everything that sort of comes in your path but you're actually uh, and uh, hoping that you score it um, on the basis of your athletic agility and so on you're looking at uh, uh, the, the beginnings of whether you are able to really engage with your opponent on a psychological level I mean, that, that, sorry to interrupt, but I mean, I understand that they're looking for different than, than you know, yeah. obviously looking for maturity and yeah. uh, other more ephemeral, uh, ephemeral mm. uh, items. Yeah. But I, I think my, my question is, is, 
and and a lot of those things do come with age, right? Yes, it's it's m- and maturity experience. and experience. It's not, it's not just age; it's experience and right? experience. Yeah. But what I find hard to understand is is that this this idea that this mm. ex- age, this experience, and mm. this this wisdom and maturity can only come not after a certain number of hours in the dojo yeah. or yeah, yeah. Uh, that, but just by the simple passage of time and and. Maybe to, to, uh, 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 one way of illustrating is there, there's a significant, I don't know what the percentage is, um, I, I haven't studied this, but I mean, there, there's a significant percentage of people who pass their first test for, for a rank. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And some who pass it very comfortably, right? Yep. Uh, in, 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 if there is a, such a thing. Yeah. But wouldn't then that also be indicative that if you are able to very comfortably pass it on your first try that maybe you had already achieved that level a year or two years prior to your actually being allowed to take the test mm. well put it this way um it's not that easy uh there might there might be some people out there like that of course but you have to have a format don't you yeah you can't, well, you can't mean- have- you can't have a random system. It's like shit. Okay, well, fuck it. You just go for Hachidan because you know you're only twenty. But geez, you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, that? yes, progression is way. fine. I could understand like six yeah. months or a year. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, it's bullshit. Like, put it this way, man. Um, like, for example, pilot training. All right. Uh, let's say pilot training. Would you want to be flying in a jumbo jet with a twenty-year-old who? learn how to fly basically on Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> and on the basis of pretty that, realistic, man. Yeah, I know it is, but... <laughs> okay. And past the exam, is like, wow, yeah, okay, you know what these buttons are for. Great. Okay, you're in. It's okay. interesting oh, you bring that up, right? Because because pilots are not... Are not the, like, the licenses and, and this stuff is not based off of the number of years you have no, been working as a but, pilot. But it's based on the number of Flight hours. hours. Yeah, yes. right? So this is this is a similar sort of thing. No, it's, it's not. Because if, if, if it was, it would be, say, 10,000 hours or 2,000 hours in the dojo, right? Which which which, which would be difficult to certify. I, 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 yeah, well, that, that's why you have, okay, two years after passing this grade or 10 years after passing this grade. That's the amount of flight hours we expect you to accumulate to gain enough experience to actually understand certain especially as you get higher um, the aspects of kendo that you can't even see but you have to be able to um, learn basically through experience and through osmosis and of course there are going to be some people who will pass their let's say say hachidan uh, on their first try, I think the youngest you can do it is 45 or 46, and they'll just bang through. They probably could have passed it when they were 44. They probably could have passed it when they were 43. Okay, let's face it. And then there are some people who keep going until they're about 70, 75, 80, who finally pass it. So there's, of course, there is a lot of disparity in, in the skill level involved in, 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 in each practitioner based on their natural ability, uh, their training environment, um, and all sorts of other things, right? Their, their physique, their health, mm-hmm. all sorts of things. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, as your general, uh, what is expected before you can sit the exam is how many flight hours do you have under your belt? Except we don't use it in hours. We do it in how many years since you passed your last grade. So to me, it's essentially exactly the same thing. Like you, think- have, you have to accumulate uh, a certain amount of experience before you qualify to sit the exam. Whether you are already able to do that um, is really not the point. And it kind of li- that kind of links into one of the other points you made about provides a reverse incentive to stop training. So like you pass one grading. So like for example, I passed, or when, when I passed uh, Gordon, then I've got, was it five years until I can take sixth band? So I'll just take four years off and then just hammer it in the dojo for the final year before I'm eligible to take straight away that I haven't been training. Yeah. They, people like that yeah. do not pass. Mm. They just don't. I understand. Yeah. But I mean, th- th- this comes back to me, the second point about uh, like, are the judges able then to impartially judge, right? Because we, I mean, we, we talked about right, the, the, the Donald's being technical 
great. Right? I'm not. Ar- I'm not trying to argue that you can't. That you can somehow magically achieve high rank without putting in the hours, without putting in the effort, without putting in um, that. I, what, what, what I'm saying is. It feels like the, the 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 minimum number of years now. The fact that it, that that it is so many years sort of implies that the judges can't actually impartially grade you no, on on no, whatever. I, I, I know what you mean by that, but it's not. Why not just if, if they haven't achieved that level, then just fail them? No, no, no. The thing is, mate, it's like why so many years? In the, in the grand scheme of kendo, perhaps in other. Uh, cultural pursuits or sporting pursuits, 10 years might seem like a long time. Okay? But it's been 10 years since I passed Nanadan, and I'll be sitting Hachidan for the first time. And I've been thinking about the Hachidan exam pretty much every day for the last 10 years. Okay? And I'm thinking, where the hell did those 10 years go? (laughs) Seriously. It is not it is not uh, in the scheme of things because uh, like for example in other sports and maybe even other budo uh, to a certain extent um, a lot of people sort of once they stop competing they sort of peter out of that that art or that sport right they sort of give up um, because they can't compete anymore I mean uh, Rugby and soccer are obviously a good example. Baseball is a good example. And martial arts, I know a lot of judo people who don't practice after they get to about 40 because their bodies are completely screwed, you know, um, and so on. But kendo, it's like you, you just, you are actively training in your 70s and your 80s with people who are in their 20s and 30s. And so 10 years in the scheme of things, in the context of kendo, is actually not that long. It really isn't that long at all. Um, And I've found just through experience, right, that uh, the things that I have learned in the last 10 years, um, I thought I was pretty shit hot when I got my nana done, right? Passed it first time and I was thinking, yeah, baby, this is cool. And I look back on that now and I think, holy Jesus, you know, that that was just so shallow. The, my level of understanding compared to now and I'm not under any illusion that my under level of understanding now is anything near profound at all you know um, every day that I go to training um, I am and I'm not saying this to sound like a you know a pompous idiot every day I go to training I'm, I'm learning something learning something that I never even would have thought about you know even a, even a, a couple of years ago and it's completely sort of changing the way that I approach. It's constantly evolving. Okay, so I think that that kind of experience is is really crucial if you want to look at uh, something like kendo. It's more uh, more than just a competitive sport, but something that is going to provide you with lots of other things which are um, more tangible benefits to, to, you know, just your life in general. I absolutely, look, I absolutely agree. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that it, that there's going to be that if you, if you, if you change these rules, that you're suddenly going to have a rash of, uh, of 25 year old Hachi dance, right? Yeah. Uh, but what I, all I'm saying here is that, you know, there's, there, there, there's, you know, there's, there's these rules that where, where maybe it serves a, a, a strong purpose, and this does not feel like one of them. Like if you were to eliminate these rules and just say, okay, well, one year between grading, just to, just so we make people one year between attempts, yep. uh, just to make people cool their heads a bit. Yep. Um, would they, that? They have another big problem, and this has actually been. Uh, a problem in the past you get people who actually pass all of their grades first time okay and like one person who's a very famous sensei in Japan uh, by the time he was 50 I think it was uh, or just over 50 he was a Hanshi Hachidan okay this is high as you can go what next well hopefully you're not in it just for uh, for your ninth done yeah, well, the thing is, by having the, these gaps between it, you know, a little bit more time to actually mature as you go, um, that's that's precisely the kind of benefits that you do get. Um, you, having that 
you're not doing it for the grade, but it is a way of measuring yourself. Okay, and you want it, once you if okay because you're so goddamn brilliant when you're uh, 20 or 30 and then so you pass all the all the uh, grade uh, skilled skilled but young overconfident and brash yeah <laughs> okay and then and then you've got nowhere else to go it becomes a very uh, egocentric sort of world even musashi said it himself he said um you know one of the famous you know the well-known phrase uh, sections in his book he said you know un- until the age of 30 you know i won all my matches you know, 60 odd jewels or whatever the hell it was um, but it wasn't out of an understanding of the way or the uh, the, um, the the a uh, higher understanding of of the spirit that that permeates it or underpins it it was out of lu- just out of luck and you know brute strength basically right so another thing that you have behind these uh, okay you have to do a certain amount of time before uh, you're eligible to go up the ladder. Uh, Another part of that is that kind of old traditional way of thinking that was a part of the of the of the samurai mindset in terms of shugyo. Okay, so um, this is this is to to an an extent um, has been retained. And I, I think that's a really important cultural aspect of the martial arts, uh, well, in, in the case at the moment we're talking about kendo, um, because the people who essentially created kendo, its prototypical form, people like Miyamoto Musashi, I mean, the, their their wisdom, their knowledge, which you know still remains today, um, very well categorically states that. You know, even though you might be incredibly skilled and talented when you're young, you'll never, never understand until you're actually old enough and mature enough. And and by keeping these sort of uh, these years between grades, I think very much kind of uh, highlights that kind of humility, um, which I think is an important part of it, but also gives each practitioner uh, a kind of a framework that they can build into their lives rather than getting it all out the way when when you're young. I mean, you look at things like sumo, um, like uh, in the professional sumo, right? They, uh, they will get promoted on how many matches they win, right? And they might go up in the ranks and if they win a few basho, they'll get the coveted rank of Yokozuna, and once you get to Yokozuna, that's the only rank that you can't be demoted from, right? But all of the other ones, the Mayagashira and the Ozeki and all the rest of it, Ozeki is the rank under uh, Yokozuna. It's like if you think of Yokozuna as, let's just say Hachidan, and you think of Ozeki as Nanadan, okay, you're pretty good, but then as you get older, you start getting injured, Okay, you go down in the ranks. You don't keep that rank anymore. So it's very much based on how skilled you are in the ring. Yokozuna, on the other hand, even if they get really weak and they start losing, they still retain that rank. And that's why once they lose a couple of basho, uh, they quit after that. They retire. They're sort of almost um, forced to retire in a way because it would be really, really bad <laughs> to have a Yokozuna losing to a bunch of... Time, right? <laughs> Okay, so and again, that's that's because that system is based on results on the dohyo, and kendo is not the the grades championships are based on how many points you score in the shiaijo, but shinsa or gradings they're not based on they're based on different criteria in a way, and so I, I think I just um I just happen to have these because I'm I'm doing a class on Monday. I just want to show you these. Okay, please look at this photo. Uh, this picture. Yeah, it looks like a what a Vermeer or Dutch. Okay, which, which is which is better? <laughs> that's uh, that's a Van Gogh. Yeah. So is this? Ah, okay. A very young Van Gogh. Mm. Very young Van Gogh. Okay. okay. And in terms of the picture, 
itself, it's like, it's very beautiful and it's very accurate. It's very clean. It could almost be a photograph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so technically it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? Really, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to paint like that, right? This yeah. was done when he was when he was quite young. I'm not sure. The, it was 1881 or 1882. Okay, as uh, Van Gogh becomes more established and and enlightened, this is the kind of shit that he painted. <laughs> <laughs> but, or, or as he slowly went insane. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's sort of like. If he wrote, if he drew this when he was young, or when he, if he painted this when he was young, nobody would appreciate it, would they? No I one did appreciate it, even when he was old. No, no, this, my, this my, <laughs> it, was because he, it was because he was old, because he could do this, because he could do yes, this, yeah. okay, based on his obvious skill in the techniques and the kihon of his art. Doing something like this is based on this. If he started I think, I think, doing this stuff first, you'd say that my kid could do that. <laughs> I think Picasso, right, is, is, is a perfect example. I think Picasso even, even said, right, you have, to, you have to know all the rules of art. You have to master all the rules or know all the rules of art first before yeah. you can break them. Yeah, right. yeah, so. yeah. And Budo is very, very similar in that sense. Okay, it's the same sort of thing, and that's that's why you know, Shodan, Nidan, Sandan are very much focused on the basics. But as you get to the higher grades, you're talking about stuff like unless you really know about art, you could not really understand what the hell it is that Van Gogh was doing here. Okay, it becomes very abstract, and so you know, I, th I think I, I, I disagree. Well, put it this way, I don't, as, as a practicing or active practitioner of Kendo, um, I have absolutely no problem with the system uh, in which Dan are spaced out over a number of years. Um, because after 30 years of doing it, or over 30 years of doing it, it actually makes a lot of sense to me where I'm at at the moment. Uh, maybe I could take this uh, approach this from a from a different angle here. Uh, I also have a I mean we have a question here about uh, older practitioners, and, and I'm going to try to actually expand that to uh, not just older practitioners, but people who have significant experience in other martial arts uh, or have some sort of other other foundation that allows them to perhaps, from a pure technical stance, skip some of the earlier grades but but currently that's in kendo that's that, that kind of thing is not allowed it, it, it's sometimes uh there, there actually it's not entirely true um for example when you are selected to represent your prefecture at the kokutai or you know the national sports meet um if uh i think you, there has to be certain grades filling certain positions and if one person has been selected but they're they don't they're one done short or something like that the, uh, it can be recommended that they do a toby done and uh, go up a done for that for that purpose so it's not unheard of in kendo it's just well, i mean really more of uh, let, let, let's and not that i'm going to sound incredibly arrogant here but not to my own horn but you know i've never done kendo but i have the feeling that given my experience in others, starting in Kendo, it perhaps would not take me as many years as it would someone with, with less Budo experience to achieve this, a certain technical level. Uh, someone here is also pointing out like older practitioners, for example, are able to start uh, testing at uh, EQ instead of Sankyu. Well, I think in Japan, for example, here, all adults, they would start the first one if they start as an adult, it would be at Ikkyu, which is what I did. But I think uh, at the All Japan Kendo Federation, in order to get Ikkyu, you have to be, the, the youngest is 12, isn't it? Or 13? Uh, that, that depends it's, on the on the um, uh, the prefecture. Oh, uh, for, for Ikkyu, it would be the, the city, I think, wouldn't it? And then, but even below that, then the, the, the uh, sorry, no, Ikkyu, yeah, prefecture. Then below that, um, 
like knee cue down to maybe yeah. you've got cue or nano cue. That's done by the, the city, sometimes even the clubs. But IQ would, would be the first, I suppose, national standard yeah. um, grading in kendo. So for me, when I started, I was 27 when I started here. Um, yeah, I didn't have to go through any of the other Q grades. It was just straight in at IQ, which is the case for, for adults. But for the younger kids, then they need to go through uh, well, the, the lower yeah. Q grades. Well, what, what Marco says here, uh, he says maybe it's better to think of these time spans as training periods rather than waiting times. And that's just, that's exactly that's, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the answer. Thank you for that, Marco. Um, but with... Uh, you know, there, there, there is a little bit of flexibility with regards to somebody's situation, their age, for example, in this case, right? Um, Such as a half waiting period for people over 60. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. They, they trialed. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, which they trialed, um, which is fine at the local level, but once you get up to the level where you're actually going for a national exam, uh, where you're going out against professionals like the police, uh, well, you know, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't always work out so well. Yeah, for for all concerned. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we've been going for uh, just about an hour now, and just to keep things from uh, from from going on too long, uh, I think we should probably cut it off here for today. I just want to thank the the both of you for uh, for your honest perhaps too honest for your own good, sometimes, opinions. <laughs> Definitely uh, bleep out a few of those comments. Man. <laughs> and thank you for our for our patrons for both supporting uh, Kendall World um, in, our, in our ability to, to do these things uh, and in asking some really excellent questions and making some really excellent comments. Um, so, okay, thank you guys both, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>